Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I'm back with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And this time, I am getting started on one of the videos that was requested by a viewer. As you know, if you watch my older videos, I have asked you to let me know which G.I. Joe toys you would like for me to review. And the first request I got was for the Dreadnoughts. In the G.I. Joe universe, the Dreadnoughts were a motorcycle gang led by Zartan. There were three original Dreadnoughts, Buzzer, Ripper, and Torch. I'm not going to review all of the Dreadnoughts in this one video. I'm going to review Ripper and Torch a little bit later, so I'm going to set them aside for now so that we can look at my favorite Dreadnought, Buzzer. The introduction of a motorcycle gang in the G.I. Joe universe may seem a little bit strange. I mean, it did take the G.I. Joe toy line in a non-military direction, but I really liked it. I first learned of the Dreadnoughts through the comic books, so when I saw the action figures on the shelves, I was really jazzed and I definitely wanted to get them. Often, when G.I. Joe introduced non-military elements, it usually leaned towards science fiction. And so I like the Dreadnoughts as a way of introducing some some other non-military aspects to the G.I. Joe universe without going straight sci-fi. It would be incorrect to say the Dreadnoughts were not influenced by science fiction because they do appear to be inspired by the movie Mad Max. Oddly enough, the Dreadnoughts were a motorcycle gang that did not come with motorcycles. Uh, later on, we did get a toy Dreadnought cycle, but it was kind of a three-wheeled vehicle, and I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, they also did get the Thunder Machine, which was a really cool kind of uh, Mad Max-style car, and I did really like the Thunder Machine, but again, it's not a motorcycle. Let's take a look at Buzzer's accessories, starting with his backpack, and his backpack was actually two parts. You can see that mainly it's just a gas can, uh, and it fits on this rack by this peg, the hole in the back of the ba gas can, and of course the gas can is hollow. I'm not a big fan of this backpack. Uh, Buzzer did not come with a motorcycle, so he wouldn't have had a motorcycle to fuel up with this gas can. Uh, and they may have intended it as fuel for his chainsaw, but his chainsaw doesn't appear to have any place to put fuel in, so it doesn't really work for that. I just think it's kind of useless. Buzzer came with his chain axe, and this is actually made out of a pretty rubbery material, and I really like that. I wish more of the accessories were made a little bit softer, out of a slightly softer plastic that would have prevented breakage of some of the accessories, and it probably would have prevented some breakage of the thumbs of the action figures as well. This chain axe is a crescent blade on a chain and a handle, uh, and it's got this chip in it, which I think is a nice detail, uh, just something that uh, they added to it, so it looks good. I don't think this would be a very practical weapon. With this blade swinging around on a chain, you're just as likely to cut off your own head or jab it into your thigh than to injure an enemy. This chain axe looks pretty cool, but really, who cares? Buzzer is known for one accessory and one accessory only, and that, of course, is his chainsaw. The file card says this is a diamond tooth chainsaw, which is used to cut through metal. And it doesn't look like any chainsaw I've ever seen. It looks more like a chainsaw that's been placed on the end of a gun. It's got this butt stock here. It doesn't seem to have any kind of fuel tank. Uh, it's, uh, it does have this handle on the side, so he can, you know, use it uh, two-handed to cut through things. It does have some really nice detail, and I like it. It is a really awesome-looking weapon. Uh, I, I think that probably you couldn't really make a chainsaw like this, but uh, who cares? It just looks really cool. Let's look at the articulation of Buzzer, and Buzzer came out in 1985, but he had the 1984 G.I. Joe action figure articulation, which meant that he could turn his head from side to side. Now, most figures that came out in 1985 had a ball joint at the neck, so not only could they turn, turn their head side to side, they could also look up and down, like Bazooka here. But Buzzer and the other Dreadnoughts did not have that new point of articulation. They still had the 1984 uh, swivel head, and that, I think, to me, means that these figures were designed in 1984, but not released until a year later. Another 1985 figure that still had the 1984 articulation was Tollbooth. As you can see, he also has the swivel head, but he, like the Dreadnoughts, came out in 1985. Buzzer could move his arm up at the shoulder about so far, and he could swing it all the way around. Uh, he could move his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees, and he had a swivel at the bicep, so he could swivel his arm all the way around. 
The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside and allowed him to move at the torso a little bit. The O-ring on this action figure is a little bit loose, which also makes the legs a little bit loose. Uh, he could move his leg up at the hip about 90 degrees, he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees, and he could move his legs apart about so far. Let's look at the sculpt and design of Buzzer. Uh, first of all, on his left arm, he has a really cool tattoo that looks kind of like a dagger with a snake coiled around it. Uh, making action figures with tattoos was a fairly courageous thing for Hasbro to do. This is not something that you would typically see in toys designed for children. Also on his left arm is this black band and his right arm is bare. Yojo.com says that Buzzer used all unique parts, but this right arm looks to me a lot like Gung Ho's right arm. And they are so close to the same that if they are not identical, they are so close to being identical that I cannot tell the difference. Buzzer's face is kind of ugly, let's be honest. Uh, he's got these silver sunglasses, uh, and he's got a kind of a rubbery hair with a ponytail in the back and a very prominent widow's peak. Looking at Buzzer's chest, he has a khaki shirt with the sleeves ripped off. You can kind of see the rips on the sleeves on the sculpting of the chest. He has a green strap with some green grenades and that does continue all the way around to the back. Uh, on this side he has some interesting pieces. Uh, it looks like he has US Army airborne jump wings. And this, to me, appears to be a Soviet officer's hat insignia. And he also has some silver dog tags. Now, these are not items that uh, Buzzer would have acquired normally. These are probably trophies, perhaps stolen or taken off of some of his victims. So these items, I think, tell a story. Uh, we don't know exactly where Buzzer got these but he must have gotten them through some kind of no nefarious means. As I said, the green strap does go around to the back, and I really like that. If you remember my review of Duke, uh, that was one of my knocks against that figure, is that the strap kind of just disappeared. But this one, they actually got the back to match the front. Buzzer has a silver skull and crossbones belt buckle, which I think is a very nice detail and a nice paint app. Uh, he has what I guess you would call a leather cod piece, uh, on the back he has some pockets, a black belt. He's wearing blue jeans and on his thighs he has what I guess would be black leather armor. And then on his feet he has some very nicely sculpted brown leather riding boots. Overall, I think this action figure really looks great. I've always been a fan of the Dreadnoughts. I love their biker gang look to them. Uh, he looks like he's something out of a post-apocalyptic movie. Uh, he's definitely very non-military, which is a departure for G.I. Joe, but it's not like he's wearing neon green or something. He still looks fairly realistic, uh, and he looks very unique. I love the Dreadnoughts in general, and Buzzer is my favorite. The Dreadnoughts, despite being a biker gang, did not come with motorcycles back in 1985, but what you can do nowadays is you can go to your local toy store and get one of these 1 18th scale motorcycles, and that is about the right scale to fit a dreadnought. So you put buzzer on there. Uh, now I've found that uh, using some sticky tack on the handlebars helps because uh, his old vintage hands don't really like to fit over the handlebars, but finally you can give buzzer a motorcycle so he looks like a proper motor motorcycle gang member. That's the way a dreadnought should look. Let's take a look at the file card, and Buzzer is another figure that has multiple versions of his file card. These file cards were printed on the back of the packaging that the action figure came in. You can see some of the front art of the packaging there, and on the back, these file cards were there. You're intended to cut these out and keep them. These four file cards represent three different textual variations and two different colors. So uh, even though these are all file cards for the same action figure, uh, they are all different. Let's start with the version of the file card that I believe to be the earliest version. And this version says up at the top, Dreadnought, codename Buzzer. And Buzzer is more of an alias than a codename. It has his portrait here, and here down at the bottom it says, The Enemy. And that's a little bit different from Cobra file cards. It would have a Cobra symbol on here. But Dreadnoughts are not technically Cobra agents. They are independent. They are their own motorcycle gang. So down here in the faction it just says, The Enemy. 
His file name is Dick Blinken, in parentheses, Richard Blinken Smythe, and there's a bit of an inside joke with these dreadnought uh, file names. Uh, these are the file cards for the other two, uh, Ripper and Torch. If you put the file cards in this order and read the first names, the first names read Tom, Dick, and Harry. And the last names read Winken, Blinken, and Nod. Of course, Winken, Blinken, and Nod is a famous poem by Eugene Field. Back to Buzzer's file card. Uh, it says his place of birth is Cambridge, England, so he is British. This section says, Buzzer was an extreme left-wing Cambridge sociology don who went to Australia to research the biker gang phenomenon only to be transformed into the very object of his research. A university don is basically a fellow or a tutor, so Buzzer is highly educated. In fact, he is just short of being a professor. The fact that he went to Australia to research the biker gang phenomenon I think reflects the influence that the Mad Max movies had on the Dreadnoughts. Years of intellectual displeasure caused repressed psychotic anger manifested in an intense desire to chainsaw apart the expensive gigaws of technological society. Gigaws is another vocabulary word for today, and what the word means is basically something that is gaudy or useless. It doesn't say exactly what kind of extreme left-wing ideology Buzzer ascribed to. He could have been a left anarchist or a communist, but like many extremists in the political spectrum, he found himself disillusioned with society, and when that happens, it can sometimes manifest in destructiveness. This bottom section has his specialty and M.O., and it says here that M.O. Uh, stands for modus operandi, which is Latin for mode of operation. A scavenger of the swamps, Buzzer can cut through steel, wrought iron, and any metal except armor plate with his diamond-toothed chainsaw. After this first version of the card, they actually changed the text of this section here, and the second version of the card had the changes of the text applied with this sticker. And this is really strange. It's the only time that I know of where they changed the file card by slapping a sticker on it. You can even see the old text here under the sticker. This version still has him going to Australia to research the biker gang phenomenon, but instead of repressed psychotic anger, it says years of intellectual displeasure and extreme indignation at society's two-faced morality manifested in an intense desire to chainsaw apart the expensive gigas of technological society. I'm not certain about the reason for this change, but I suspect they wanted to eliminate this reference to uh, repressed psychotic anger, and that may have had something to do with with Zartan's file card, which referred to him as an extreme paranoid schizophrenic. And outrage over this line caused them to change the text on Zartan's file card. And I, th I think maybe they wanted to remove this uh, psychotic anger. Essentially, uh, it's not a bad idea if G.I. Joe file cards stay out of the psychoanalysis business. Changing the file card to avoid pop psychology may explain the first change to the file card, but not the second change. This one has a new text up here at the top. Instead of going to Australia to study the biker gang phenomenon, this has him going to Australia for a short respite, only to find himself, one year later, transformed into a vexated wanderer. The rest of this version of the file card matches the second version, and this change is a little bit harder to explain. I really don't know what the purpose would be to change him from researching the biker gang phenomenon to just becoming a vexated wanderer. It's the text from this third version of the file card that was transferred to the fourth version, this is essentially the same file card, but it has a gray color instead of the original peach color of the old file card. The file card depicts Buzzer as being one of the most interesting characters in all of the G.I. Joe universe. He's definitely one of the most complex and multifaceted characters. He is highly educated. In fact, his education level puts him somewhere between Airborne, who is a lawyer, and Doc, who of course is a medical doctor. 
That's what makes Buzzer my favorite Dreadnought. He's not just a criminal with an appetite for destruction. Uh, there is some intellect to him. There is a philosophy behind his actions. And that, I think, makes him exceptionally dangerous. He is a highly intelligent individual, but he is not limited by any moral philosophy that would stop him from destroying property and killing other people. That was my review of the Dreadnought Buzzer. I will be looking at the other two original three Dreadnoughts, Ripper and Tor in future videos, and I hope you'll stick around. Make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss those videos. If you like this video, there are three things that I want you to do. First, make sure you like this video on YouTube. Second, make sure you subscribe to the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 YouTube channel. And third, go to Facebook and like the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 Facebook page. That way you get a lot of updates that you don't get on the YouTube channel. And one more time, if there's a vintage G.I. Joe toy you would like for me to review, make sure you leave a comment and I will get to it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later. Joe Air Defense, G.I. Joe Checkpoint, Cobra Bunker, and Joe and Dreadnoughts figures each sold separately from Hasbro.